as a kid, seeing your dad knock a 1,500 pound horse to its knees, I don't think I ever questioned no. his ability to spank me. No. <laughs> Fifty percent of the people over the country still had outside privies when, when we lived here. I was in the manure, but thank God it was it because I sunk in the manure or might have broke both legs. <laughs> and he opens the trunk and the pheasant flies out. Oh, he had no, he winged oh, it. No. He winged it. If you haven't seen part one of Exploring My Roots, you should check it out. This video continues our road trip to Harrisburg, Oregon, where several generations of my family were farming. We go as far as Eugene to see the first house where I lived before coming back through Harrisburg to see other family places. Keep watching if you're in the mood for fun stories of yesteryear farm life. That's the barn, and that white house didn't have every paint on it. And that, one, that back there wasn't even there. But twice, we, when they had floods, the Willamette went right over here. Twice, we were taken out by a rowboat with water all around us. So this whole thing was covered with water. But this is, this is the house right here. And I want to see this. But, but, yeah. This is where you grew up. This is where I grew up. That was huge. That barn seemed that, huge to you? Now, here, here's the other thing. The front is the back and the back is the front. One of the floods, it got turned, and it was easier when they got the cats to turn it back to square about 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. So the, bottler, the front's the back and the back's the front. And then um, back uh, in here, there is a rhubarb and then those trees out there, I'm not too sure that little orchard isn't still, um, you know, some of the little trees that were sitting there. But that was it. There was, there was a porch on it, but it didn't, see, they put siding on it. It was just raw wood. It, we never ever had paint on it. Hmm. But, uh, and then the, uh, this, this part here, they enclosed in because that was kind of open because, uh, you know, we were fortunate, we had inside plumbing. 50% of the people over the country still had outside privies when, when we lived here in the you know, 40s mm -hmm. and 50s. But now on the other side, I'll go down a little bit and come back. On the other side of this was a road all the way back down to a slough. And I had, I had my horse flash and I could get, you know, get on him with just a bridle, bareback. Just like the movie, not movie, but the Mayberry, mm -hmm. Opie, with a, with, a, with a bamboo pole with a bobber on it, and go down, ride my horse, and fish, and catch bluegill or sun perch with a worm. Oh, and then out here would be the manure pile and all that. And, you know, I think I told you about flying. So one day, I, you know, I was going to be a pilot, and so I said to myself, well, you know, I, I might have to bail out of the plane. So I better practice. Mm -hmm. So I took the sheet off my bed, went out and, uh, on the, the opening there, and I jumped out and used it like a parachute. Well, the thing it ripped out of my hand, and thank God, you know, let's say a pile. <laughs> I, thank God, I went up to over my knees. I remember this. I remember going like that suction. I was in the manure, but thank God it was it because I sunk in the manure or might have broke both legs. <laughs> You know, nine nine years old thinking, yeah. I got it. Huh? Yeah, yeah I'm, well, no, I got a, I got my sheet. It's a parachute. Yeah. You know, it'll save me. <laughs> wow. You know what? Maybe that's where Brandon thought he was buying. You know, it. that's yeah. That's that, that story runs in the family. Yeah. Now, then, so this has a regular roof on it, but at the, in the, in the um, winter time, the 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 it would leak. Okay, this road here goes. All the way down there, there's a slough down there that we would, you know, fish. And then this is a McMullen place, and we as kids, Chartis and Bill McMullen, Mike and I would get out here and we'd get on their tractor and ride with them up and down and up and down as they plowed. This is Mike and I used to um, crawl up and sneak over and because we shared like the I half of it. Small house for five people. Yeah, yeah really small house. <laughs> anyway, uh, we just said jump out of bed, or not jump out, of, crawl out of bed and crawl, crawl over and scare the guy. Well, one time apparently, 
we both had the idea at the same time of both being really, really quiet all along the floor. Well, we ran into each other out in the middle of the floor, scared the crap out of us, and we never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another thing. So, we had, that, we had some other equipment here. And so, at five years of age, Dad and Mike and Joseph were in school, and so I wasn't in school yet. Dad uh, had me uh, run the caterpillar, the cat, you know, it goes straight, and you can pull the handles one way. Anyway, so at five years old, he's putting pipe on the pipe trailer, and I'm driving the cat, and I'm supposed to do, if he waves my right hand, his right hand, I'm supposed to pull the right lever. If he raises his left hand, I'm supposed to pull the left lever. And if he goes like this, I push the handle forward and stop it. <laughs> so I'm driving the cat at five years old. At six and a half years old, they had me come down, and I, I drove the case tractor by myself wow. back up the road and did something else. But the, the, the funniest one is where I, maybe I was a little older, and Joe Sill and Dad were following... Um, me in the pickup, and I had I was driving the cat, but it was rocking. I fell asleep while I was driving the cat, and it veered over into the ditch. And he knew something was wrong. Dad jumped out and ran up. I was just fall. I just fell asleep. And the cat's going on, <laughs> going about its way. But anyway, uh, yeah, all this was in hops too. There's spring eagles. Okay, that was there, but that's where the hot picker was. And then I'm going to turn right here. I'm going to go down to uh, where you would dry uh, the blossoms. And they use sulfur uh, and they had heat. So it was up, uh, the, the, down below was like, let's use the word heater, but sulfur heat. And then up above, you would turn the hops. And, I mean, you'd let them out, and then you'd turn them, and you'd turn them, and they'd dry. And then, after that, you'd bale them. But that's another uh, part. Okay, the building, the red, the reddish building right back there is what we referred to as the Mexican house. That definitely was just a living quarters for the Hispanic people. Mm -hmm. And then here is where we, uh, I should say we, I mean, I'm so young, but how good help was I? Um, this area didn't look like this at all, but this is where you dry the hops and then bale them okay. and then store them, and that's kind of the you know. But he did; he had all the thing, and I think that's one reason why maybe he would, you know had the idea that not just being a farmer, but take all the steps, and then he would actually sell mm -hmm. to the breweries. So this is the place right here that he brought up. And, but this is where Clint, Ethel May, Mary, and Linda lived. Okay. So, Dad, we're getting ready for an event. And Dak walks by, I don't remember, the, it wasn't, I didn't know it was Cleo, it wasn't, it wasn't copper, it doesn't make any difference. Anyway, as he walked by, it, it kicked him. And it kicked him right in the wall. I remember he reached back, looked at his wall, and he was empty in the wallet. He turns right around. He walks up and he hits that horse right behind the ear, punches it, and the horse buckles. Now, as a kid, seeing your dad knock a 1,500-pound horse to its knees, I don't think I ever question no. his ability to spank me. No. <laughs> but the other thing I love about dad, and the contrast, mom was always a screamer, and dad would talk to us. Yeah. And I know for me, one of the reasons the way I am is I would rather be talked to because I'd listen. Well, if somebody's screaming at you, you just shut them down. And so that's the way with my boys. I've always talked to them. Well, thank God I had a father, you know, that I witnessed it. Well, that's how I'd rather, I'd rather somebody talk to me rather than just accuse me and yell at me. And... So which well, family would have been better off? You know, the Grimes or the Murphys? That's a good question. Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, huh? Because this is th this is uh, 1,200 acres. This this part here, and, it's, and then it's, I'll show you some on the other side of the road too. But anyway, 
right in this grove was a house and this is actually where uh, dad was born so I'm assuming the house is positioned somewhere maybe those little trees were in the front of it but this all, all this is still the home place and I mentioned like Esther this is Esther area but you go this is all this is still all the home place that tree line is and then you go across and I'll show you where it kind of ends up up to the railroad tracks yeah kind of in the back of my mind I was thinking the Grimes's had a much smaller uh, footprint than the Murphy's as far as you know well that's success you know, in the community and everything else yeah well yeah, I think the, you know the Grimes just worked it's all you know dairy farmers but yeah clear back in there um, this is what they call the bull pen. This is where they had the, the, the bulls, or ate the big old bull. And uh, this house was built in 1915. That's kind of nice. They painted it. Oh, I better get over here. Uh, Gary, this is funny. This little thing here would be like, I don't know exactly what you call it. But uh, Gary and Gary, Gary Attic was uh, a classmate of Jim Murphy. Well, he worked, worked for Ed, but there's was like basically a bed. And that's where he slept. And that's where he slept. And of course, uh, where, they, where you see the, the red barn, there was a little store there that that uh, Marion had groceries and stuff. The local, I mean, it's like a little mart, you know what I call it. Well, later on, they built this. And basically, the neighborhood, it was like, you know, mostly breads, eggs, all the, yeah. the and canned goods, all that, was bought here. Wow. Mm. This little, this little, uh, this, this little brick structure. Yeah, 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 plumbus block. And then there, there's the milking parlor and the, lo the loafing shed. And there, this is, this is, mom, it's so plain. This is really, it. Ed, anytime we boys came out to see, you know, I think Ed, didn't look at it, look at us as nephews. It's just two more hands to work. Mm -hmm. So imagine that dome not being on those silos and seeing your son uh, uh, stomping silage. And what means stomping silage? You're blowing silage in and we're walking around, walking around with the pitchfork and you're compacting it. Uh -huh. and Hoping you don't sudden, sink down. And then you're, all of a sudden you're on the top and you're seeing your son's a whole body walk around on the top, uh, on of, the top of the silo. And we're, and we're stomping men. Or not men, stomping. I did that too, but you know, stomping silage. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a story about Ed um, when he was a young, I guess maybe he was, you know, in the 20s or whatever. He's the older brother. Yeah. He, no, I guess he, um, Lloyd was the oldest. And then Ed, but a bull got him down, and he, the only thing he did, he grabbed the horns and push on it, and the bull, I mean, had his feet because he could have. Anyway, the, apparently Yay. the bull pushed him all over, and unfortunately pushed him over and pushed him almost like under the fence, and he got away from him. Otherwise, he could have yeah. been. Because back in time, you know, a lot of that, you know, there was a lot of farm accidents. You know? mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But, yeah, but anyway, again. Look how far, I mean, you, you know, the land goes. And and so there's 1,200 acres here. And it's so in the property, and then uh, Ed built this house down here for when they had a hired man and a family. Um, and then they, I think it was a rental. But the property stops at uh, uh, the railroad tracks. There's another, there's another guy, the generation ahead of dad called Vinnie Grimes and he kept everything he ever had and he almost had a museum of Fordson tractors and we'd go down there we were just he actually had a, a, a steamer one of those things and as a kid you just fascinating think, yeah. yeah well you didn't think too much about it and then as you get older and older you go oh my god what did we what did we see in there it was just and now we end up now we end up going to find Eugene so how and Eugene is how close to this? Because that's where they would have gone, right? For the big city. I think 
you know, it's funny. <laughs> Going, th this sounds funny, but I think in those days, maybe going into Harrisburg was a big, a big deal. deal. You know, because uh, of just the rural area. Right here is the place. Yep. Oh, look at that. Oh, completely wrong, too. 481. I wonder, did, they, did they change the numbers? I, 481? That doesn't ring a bell. Maybe the numbers... I, I don't think the numbers would have stayed the same, but that looks like the place. It is the place because of the way the lean-to and all that is. I remember rid riding bicycles through mud puddles when it would rain out here, and that was a dead end over there, and one of my best friends was down that way. No, this is Stedman's house, because this is our house, because that's a duplex that we rented. So this is the Stedman's place. Yeah. And this is... This is a, your home place, original home place. Yeah. First of all, let me say that the Oregon City House, Ivy Acres Homestead, really is the place that feels like my home place to me. And I sincerely hope that whatever new place we find will also feel like home. Hmm. All right. I'm going to get out real quick. Okay. I did not grow up with a rural background like my dad did. I was in suburbia. And this was the place. It is strange, strange to see it again. Oh my gosh. There's too many memories to talk about right now you know what you know what I remember and your mom it was the same thing is how they the, the whole wall of the living room was windows and you could look right out into the back yep yep it was so it, sliding glass door and it was so scenic too because it made, it made, and it made it feel so big because you know you just you know, you know neat neat place the backyard was really felt private yep Let's say I'm four years, maybe he's four years old, and I'm going out and work on the garage. And he, I want to go with you, I want to go with you, I want to go with your dad. And I said, Brian, I'm going to be really busy, so you know, if you're going to go with me, you got to, you know, you got to do what I say, whatever. Okay, okay, whatever. I went out and I set him a task while I was doing stuff, and I'd look over, he was still doing it. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I didn't, I didn't expect him to be, you know, tall. I mean, not one time. Did I have to get on him and do anything? He just was busy doing exactly what I asked. And I go, this is amazing. <laughs> a four or five year old, whatever I mean, what is it? Just and that thing was cute the other day. He was talking about we went over to this place um, and called have the cowboy breakfast. Yeah, I remember and, that place. And, it, and you'd have this breakfast in this stockyard, and then you could walk out and go above. All the auction cows and horses and pigs and everything else they were selling. That was a big deal. <laughs> it was fun as a kid, you, you know. Yeah. Good breakfast and get to see some animals, animals yeah. out there. Yeah. But this is just, you know, it, Brian, it, this, it, it, this it kind of living is, is well, I think I'm the most comfortable. I like the city and all that, but I, I think it's just one of those Such things that they're fresh and you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. Yep. And I, I, and I don't know, there's just something... No, I figured I would bring my... Like I told you, a total piece going down that Peoria that. Road coming in there. All that land and... Yeah. You know, and yeah, I'm a social person. I, there's no way I could live like a mountain. There you go. Man, yeah. You know? Yeah, see the, okay, Joseph went through the 6th <laughs> to 8th grade here. Yeah, that's your sister, of course. Older yeah. sister. That's where Jill still went to junior high. Yeah. Alice and Sam, Yvonne and Bill, lived in the second house right here. Boy, is that overgrown up. Yeah, boy, overgrown. Now, what's also interesting is when they had it, they had this lot. And Bill and Yvonne did sold, sold this lot. But I gotta tell you a really funny story. Back in time, Dad always carried a shotgun in the car. Well, we were going to go over uh, to dinner from our place to Carson's. Anyway, on the way, there was a pheasant. Dad said, Mom, sit back. 
his window was down, he shot a pheasant right out of the, <laughs> two, actually he was two. He right hit, across her. He, he, <laughs> right across in front of her, right through here, he shot two pheasants. He hops out of the car, gets the pheasants, throws it in the back and in his shotgun. We get over there and he walks in and says, Sam, we gotta clean the pheasant first. So they go out and he opens the trunk and the pheasant flies out. Oh, he hadn't, and he oh, winged it. No. He winged it. Yeah. And, and he, 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 uh, he grabbed that shotgun, it was a double barrel. He grabbed the shotgun, wheeled around, shot it again, <laughs> right in that street. What the and it heck? fell down right in front of the church. Oh, <laughs> that, I, I mean, wow. But it, it, the, church, it, the preacher's telling stories about that. Well, what's so interesting still to this day is that I, did, I personally don't mind anybody hunting, you know, uh, for food. For, for, for food, because I mean, if, if it was a pheasant in June, July, I mean, whatever, it was, you know, it was taken care of. It, it was eaten. It was consumed. <laughs> but yeah, that one I just forgot about that. When I saw that church, I just, I mean, wheeled around and wham, <laughs> that bird is down. When you started telling that story about shooting the pheasant, I thought you were going to tell the story about shooting something like a pheasant but right out of a kitchen window you well, remember, dad, remember that well, story that farmhouse the farmhouse you saw dad saw a pheasant out there and rolled up the window one time or you know pushed up the window shot it right out of the, out of the kitchen you know yeah the kitchen window so that really was a shotgun house yeah well what was what was kind of neat is that for me as a kid I like pheasant better than chicken because pheasant has a lot of dark meat and chicken has a lot of white meat. Mm. And so uh, I always got the I always got the good pieces because they just didn't have chicken. Now on the farm, what sort of chores were you in charge of? Oh, I gotta tell you. Well, being younger, you get done, you get you know, different projects. But the one, the one I think is the funniest that comes to mind was, uh, let's say five years old or whatever, getting you know brought into the chores is I was taught with dad how to reach in and get the egg even though the, the chicken was roosting mm -hmm. and so I did and he told me and all that anyway this one chicken had me buffaloed because it had to it cock its head and then peck at me and I anyway I would, would probably cry or don't get it all but I'd gather all the eggs except for this one, one chicken, chicken. She, it was a little she was a little broody she, she had me buffalo. And then, you know, uh, hoeing the garden. Uh, then, you know, maybe, uh, you know, watering and, and feeding, you know, dropping hay down from the hayloft, feeding their cows, the horses, you know, whatever animals we had. And, uh, oh, and then I guess uh, when the gathering the eggs, too, is that we were shown how to put them up against the light and then all the sand. Candling. Yeah. How, to, how, to, how to sand them off and make sure they're clean. And then the other thing is since we got our own milk, we had a creamer. So you, you would you would put all the milk and you'd start spinning and you'd spin the cream off of the milk. And then they could make actually butter from it. And uh, oh, and then of course, keeping our room clean. <laughs> <laughs> Love me the cats. You know, another one of those things that's funny that you think about, I tell you the story about the you know, manure tail wrapped around dad's face. Well, I just remember going out several times that the cats would line up and he'd be milking the cow. They'd oh, yeah. Get, they'd turn around and hit one, right, squirt. hit one right in the mouth. You know, he'd be yelling, or then it would get, it would, he'd hit it and they'd be get them. I mean, it was, like, it was like a game for him. My grandfather dreamed from a young age of being a sports reporter. He never did that, but he did use his communication skills with radio reporting as part of his county agent work out of Oregon State University. Now, I never played sports. I don't really follow sports in general. In high school, I was the art student and the photographer. Actually, I did have a job with a local paper taking sports photos when I was in high school. The love of athletics really has been passed down through our family. When my dad was in high school, he was really a standout athlete with track and football and basketball. And my uncle Mike 
ended up becoming a PE teacher. His daughter, Angie, my cousin, and her son, Gus, who were on this road trip with us, well, she's very good with sports, but she really encouraged Gus to follow in that direction. Gus was a little bit quiet on our trip today, but uh, everybody in our family could not be more proud of him. He was, uh, well, he is obviously a world-class athlete doing the triathlon, is that right? Decathlon. Decathlon, I'm sorry. And, <clears throat> that's right, the sun was just in my <laughs> eyes here. <laughs> So, now when you graduated from high school, you're now a, a junior? I'm in, going to be a junior, going to be yes. a junior in college, mm -hmm. and you're on a scholarship to Rice? I am, yes. That's awesome. And uh, you're transferring to where again? Still, at this point in time, I'm still deciding. I'll probably end up going to the University of Houston the, in the spring semester. Yeah, and this is kind of a cool story. T tell us why that uh, actually might happen. Well, I... In a big of turn of events, I tore my Achilles tendon, and during that same time, my coach got a who is at Rice, who was at Rice, got a new job offer at the University of Houston, and he took that and he bargained to take me with him on a full ride to the University of Houston. So I will probably end up taking him up on that offer coming up. He's only one of two students, two student athletes, that he could take with him, and and Gus here was one of those. So. Yeah, just amazing. And I was going to say about his high school um, uh, statistics, you were like, what were you, number number two in the nation? In a sophomore year, I was I was number one in the nation. Uh, that's yeah, and amazing. Towards the end, I ended up being like number two to number around there, number two, I think. So that was super exciting. I got that's glad just, to do that. That's just just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well. Thanks for saying hello to everybody. Of course. All right. Cool.